In addition to collaborating with NAPOF, there was this post-election survey, and I'll just talk about that briefly, uh, and that involved a collaboration with API Vote and Advancing Justice. And there are two publications which you can find on our website uh, based on this post-election survey. And the bottom line is, was the API vote important? Uh, it depends on how you look at it. Would Obama have won without the API vote? Absolutely. Both in the popular vote and in the electoral college. Uh, but by our calculations, uh, APIs added about 1.5 million votes to Obama's popular vote margin. And in states where the API vote uh, was most important, was in states like Florida and Virginia. Florida, almost any group can say that they were important because the vote is always so close. Uh, but Virginia was one of these places that people knew beforehand was going to be important for uh, Asian Americans. And that's true even with this election coming up. right? Uh, AAPIs are big enough in Virginia uh, that, that, they, that they will or could potentially make a difference. Other places where they were within striking distance uh, were in Nevada, Ohio, and North Carolina. In states like California, Nevada, and Virginia, uh, AAPIs also mattered when it came to statewide contests. And then finally, a state like Minnesota really pops up uh, in terms of very high turnout. And you see that in terms of turnout among, among uh, Americans as well. In terms of the presidential vote, we found that uh, Obama won every single segment of the Asian American and Pacific Islander population. And this is important because he won the Vietnamese vote. As well, right? So this is a group that traditionally has been voting Republican. And the way I put this is that if I mean, so after the election, people were kind of freaked out that oh my God, Asian Americans voted Democratic, and like on par with Latinos. And there was a lot of speculation among mainstream bloggers and columnists like David Brooks uh, as to what was going on. But if people thought of Asian Americans as the canary in the coal mine, this is what Jeff Bush talks about Asian Americans as for the Republican Party. Uh, the Vietnamese would be like you know the canary within. Like, if you're losing the Vietnamese vote, like something is seriously wrong with your party. <laughs> think, of, think, of, think of the Vietnamese vote as a kind of leading indicator of what's wrong. Um, <laughs> when it comes to, so for Pacific Island, what's important in our survey, in our post-election survey, and in our pre-election survey, is that we have groups like Hmong and, and um, Cambodians included, and also Pacific Islander groups for the first time uh, for a nationally representative survey. We didn't find a significant gender gap. We also did not find a difference between battleground and non-battleground states. But in fact, if you break out the non-battleground states between red states and blue states, there is a difference. Uh, we can talk about that more in the We also find that turnout uh, varied dramatically. And this is where I feel confident in our numbers. Our self-reported turnout numbers are very close. This is among registered voters in our post-election survey. It's very close. It's actually slightly lower than what the current population survey reports, which we know has over-reporting. Right? So we found 79%. CPS had it at, I believe, at 83% or 84%. Um, and we also are able to have national origin breakouts the way that we can get with CPS data. And we see that turnout, at least self-reported turnout, is very high among Hmong uh, Americans and Japanese Americans, and fairly low when it comes to Cambodians and Laotians. And to me, this is interesting because whenever we talk about Southeast Asian groups, even though we use the example of Southeast Asian groups to call for disaggregation, usually they are lumped together. And when it comes to things like educational outcomes, it makes sense because you have those outcomes that are very similar. But when it comes to political participation, we find big differences between Hmong and other uh, Southeast Asian groups, especially Southeast Asian refugee groups like Hmong. I mean, like uh, like Cambodians and Asians. We also find significant variation in voter content. And comparing across racial groups, one thing I uh, neglected to mention is in our 2012 survey, we had comparison samples of, Asia, of uh, African Americans, whites, and Latinos for, for national comparison purposes. So we're able to see how uh, voter contact uh, uh, compares across these groups. And we find lower rates of contact for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders than for other groups. We also find that language needs are still very important. So even among registered voters, uh, in our survey, we found that 44% are limited English proficient. And the turnout uh, among LEP uh, voters is 9% lower uh, than among those who are not in English. But unfortunately, even though that even though language assistance is important, we found in our survey, this in our post-election surveys, that uh, it was often not available. Right? Language assistance was not uh, was not available in 45% uh, of the cases for people who voted in person, and 31% of cases in terms of people voting by mail. Finally, it's important to pay attention to LEP needs because 
if you, given the LP needs of the population and the proportion of people who choose to take their survey in language, we find big differences in terms of whether uh, people answer the survey in English or in Asian language in terms of their presidential vote and a bunch of other measures. The reason why this is important is that if you looked at the national election pool results that widely got attention that Asian Americans, 73% of Asian Americans voted for Obama, that's very close to what we find, right? It's within the margin of error pool we find in terms of our English language uh, respondents. But in our Asian language respondents, we actually find lower support uh, for Obama. Uh, so we think it's important, we encourage you all to be critical consumers of survey data. It's great that Asian Americans get attention, but if Asian Americans are going to be surveyed, uh, it's better if they get surveyed with language support than without language support, because potentially there are biases uh, in the outcomes of the In terms of the API vote in California, uh, the California results uh, for a lot of these are very similar to what we find nationally, and not surprising because California is about a third of the national uh, Asian American population, right? Um, and here are some comparisons to other states. So even though we think of ourselves as very blue, Asian Americans in California are less blue than Asian Americans in New York and New Jersey and the Midwest. But there's always the South. <laughs> We're more blue than uh, Asian Americans in the South. In terms of uh, turnout, uh, again, the numbers are pretty comparable. Uh, what's interesting is that uh, turnout, uh, the turnout figures, especially among limited English proficient, uh, were higher in um, in New York and also in the Midwest. So uh, again, uh, what, I'm just showing you the California versus the national picture, but I think eventually, actually not even eventually, one of the things I should do now, since we've done these different regional breakouts, I think it'd be good to have a slide that just uh, provides that comparison across regions. I'll just say a brief word about some important policy questions that we had in our pre-election survey. We got a lot of news coverage, which is important, again, because there wasn't you have, you have surveys now, even of main, by mainstream pollsters, that have Latino breakouts pretty regularly now, but you don't find it among Asian Americans. And so we filled an important void again in 2012. Uh, we had more language coverage and more groups covered in 2012 than we had in 2008. So important findings. One, we see a big jump, and take, we'll talk about this a little bit more, uh, in terms of support for a pathway to citizenship between 2008 and 2012. And we can speculate in the Q&A in terms of why this is the case is probably a mix of factors in play. We believe that partisanship likely plays a role here as well. In addition to the pathway to citizenship, we are, were able to help inform the uh, immigration reform debate by showing that yes, visa backlogs is also a significant concern for Asian Americans, uh, with findings that are similar for Latinos, right? Whereas not surprisingly for whites and blacks, uh, the, the ability to sponsor family members uh, to come to the United States is, is much less of a concern. We're also able to uh, help inform the fiscal cliff today, right? And this is, yeah, this is, this is huge. I'm glad that I said that, right? Uh, so this is where it helped to have someone like Miriam Young as, as a partner, right? So uh, through her work at NAPOP, she was, uh, she was invited to the White House for some briefings on not only on race issues but also gender issues, right? And so she was, so she was in some meetings in which they said, yeah, we you know the stereotype even among Asian Americans in the White House was Asian Americans probably will not support tax increases. And she's like, well, it's funny that you say that because I have this little mini report that we produced just for you on this uh, to show that Asian Americans did in fact support tax increases even among those who were high earners, among those earning more than two hundred. Mirror image, we asked a cuts only approach, the Paul Ryan plan, uh, and not much support for that. Right? So this is an important intervention in, in the policy debate. Uh, just in the interest of time, I'm just going to go pretty quickly. Uh, Asian Americans, uh, similar to Latinos, are much more in favor of the Affordable Care Act than opposed. So these figures are mirror images of what you find among white uh, voters. But another important part of what we found is that big chunks of the Asian American population did not know you know, what they thought about the Affordable Care Act. And we think of this as suggestive evidence that, you know, these might be groups that you might want to reach out to. And, that's, and, uh, and groups like the API Health Forum have used this data to help inform their outreach efforts, especially among Southeast Asian groups like Cambodians and all. On other issues, we find that education list tops a list of very serious problems. Bullying is a very significant concern, and uh, there's a study by ALDEF in New York that supports this as well, that Asian Americans uh, face a very significant problem when it comes to school bullying, bullying in schools. Uh, and then finally, when you think of environmentalism, especially in a state like California, 
Uh, Asian Americans are probably not the community we think of as the quintessential environmentalists. But when you look at this question that's been replicated over time, the trend data uh, nationally has not been encouraging. Right? So when it's pitted out, pitted as this, some would say, false choice between economic growth and environmental protection, uh, Americans are less and less supportive, and you see a significant crossover point in 2010, in the midst of uh, the Great Recession. Asian Americans are a flip of that. Right? So Asian Americans uh, nationally are more likely to say, let's still protect the environment uh, over prioritizing it. There are some important variations of the community. We don't have time for that. Uh, I'll just say that when it comes to California, you know, I'm being, you know, in 20 minutes, I'm going to finish up. Uh, so uh, in California, the findings are very similar. It's a couple of the things, and this should not be a surprise to people in the UC system. Uh, education, uh, the cost of education, affordability, and college debt are uh, significantly higher in California than elsewhere. And if you actually compare California to New York, so New York is significantly lower. Uh, than the national average. And these are kind of, this, the, the, these are the states with the largest uh, Asian American populations, and it's an important study in contrast in terms of how state policies and higher education policies uh, might produce variation in terms of what the AAPI policy agenda is. Um, I'll just let you kind of, you know, absorb some of that. I'm not gonna go through all the findings, but the findings are, are, are relatively similar for California as for the rest of the nation. The, cause, the challenge of taking care of the elderly is higher in California than elsewhere, and housing costs are also higher. We're also more environmentalists than the New Yorkers. So. <laughs> uh, in terms of next step, uh, you know, looking forward, uh, we are part of efforts to try to make sure that we're better coordinated in terms of uh, other data collection efforts moving forward. Uh, there's a greater recognition that we need accurate and timely data, and we're uh, prepared to try to do more uh, to get things out in, in, in a quicker way. One thing I'll note is that uh, a new project that I'm starting out, uh, which is, it's, it's like there's like a beta version of this site now. So going beyond the National Asian American Survey, there's so much policy and visibility on a whole bunch of other issues. And there's actually, before the complaint used to be that there's not any data on Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. Now there's more and more studies that are out on it, but people just don't know about it. So uh, the, uh, the idea here is to uh, feature as much uh, good quality research as possible uh, on AAPI communities that are relevant for policy issues like health, health outcomes, health disparities, uh, education, uh, and, and, and a whole bunch of other uh, issues. Thank you. Thanks.